82% of Kenyans believe that social media influencers do not affect their purchases. That's according to recently released research by local data science company Odipo Dev. The research also revealed a large number of respondents reported having no specific reason for following influencers. So what do these findings mean for the future of influencer marketing and why has it become such a popular method of advertising? Let me introduce my guest to my immediate left is Chiki Onukwe, who is a wellness advisor, a very familiar face here in Citizen. Uh, to my immediate right is Kamarichi Mbarani. He's the CEO of medios.co.ke and he'll be telling us more about that. And not, last but not least, Boniface Nyaga, CEO of Mawaida Consultancy. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Um, I, I think we need to first define what an influencer is, mm. especially in this social media age. Uh, let me begin with you, Kamarichi, because you actually manage them. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in your definition, uh, what is a social media influencer? Um, no, a social media influencer is basically anyone who's able to influence a someone's purchasing decision. So if I was going to buy product X and I see influencer talking about it, so I'm now taking you know this other product into consideration to the point where when I go to a supermarket, yeah. I will pick that product off the shelf and actually pay for it. You've influenced me. So the person who has the ability to do that is the influencer. So um, does it go, Boniface, does it go beyond uh, interactions when it comes to product? Uh, does it go to something else? Can you influence on something else? Exactly, and, and when you're talking about influence, there, there, there are three things. There's, uh, there's brand, marketing, and sales. Sales is, you know, a sales is a decision. And the idea is there is a decision, um, there's, there's a process that goes to the decision. And that's where branding comes in. I have to know who you are before I buy you. I have to know what you're selling and why am I buying that thing. So before we even come to the final decision of purchase, there's influence along that decision, um, that decision pipeline. And, and Chiki, in your view, what do you make of that whole term, that tag, social media influencer? influencer. I mean, I think, to disagree with you slightly, it's dangerous territory when you link influencers straight to, to kind of like purchase point. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, there are very many brands that are looking for consideration or conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get into very tricky ter territory because it's hard to track. So if you're sitting in a meeting and you're promising ABC sales returns. That's why we're in the murky territory that we are now with influencers, because you just can't promise that. That just doesn't exist. So I think influencers are about influence, full stop. So am I now considering your product? Am I now talking about your product? Um, are people now aware of your product in a way that they may not? And then maybe are people buying your product? But it's not like a guarantee. Uh, influencers will be able to influence purchase. Well, let's take a look at some of this research that came out of uh, Odipo Dev. Um, and that first slide coming up, looking at who social media users trust when it comes to relaying information right up there. Um, and we can see that it is, we'll make the screen a bit bigger behind me, Robert. Online influencers, very little, 14%. Um, and then, of course, a slightly larger number there, 20%. Um, of online users and then brand online advertisements is the largest. So that's still working. Um, which then brings a question in of why then do we use social media influencers? First of all, what do you make of this uh, research that came out? Let me begin with you, um, Kamalichi. Yeah, um, the research makes sense as it is. But, um, you know, there's, I'd like to agree with something Chiki said, rather, something I hadn't mentioned yet. There's aspects of a brand that we can't exactly quantify. You know, item, you know aspects like brand love, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. You see cologne or perfume on a billboard, and it's next to a celebrity. So you buy into that, and, you know, when you wear that cologne, it makes you feel like a movie star, you know. So there's aspects like that that actually you know, what you call, that's now the influence. You've actually been, even if you don't get up to you know, the purchase point of it, it's now taking it into consideration. So, you know, there's that aspect as well. I mean, it is now becoming a serious thing. People are making jobs and careers out of yeah. social media influencing. Mm -hmm. And um, you work quite a bit with uh, various brands, mm -hmm. Boniface. Mm -hmm. How does one begin to craft a social media pr uh, profile or portfolio? No. The thing is, it's called influencer marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So you must be an influencer and you must be a marketer. So the question is, who are you influencing? What's your audience? 
What's your audience profile? What's your audience persona? And then how does that relate to, and, and then for you to be able to market, marketing means is taking that influence that you have over your audience and getting them to, to achieve or uh, to achieve either the branding or the marketing or the sales um, objective that the client has. So I guess you, you, you build your profile really, uh, there are several ways of doing it, but for me, I, I usually advise people, you know, if and if you're a big brand, start with a test project. Because a test project will help you avoid a lot of the potholes that a lot of people go through, you know. One, you'll be able to really define your brand. And I always say, don't be a matatu, there are two kinds of influencers. There are matatu influencers and there are uber influencers. I always say that because a matatu, inf you know a matatu is going somewhere, okay? I have a route, I know where I'm going, so if you're if you're coming on board, you're coming on board because of where I'm going. But an Uber influencer, a client comes and they'll take you wherever. Or you want to go to Hallingham, let's go to Hallingham. You want to go to Githurai, we go to Githurai. You get. So I think what is most important is one, define your brand. Two, um, find a way of now using your influence. And activation design is also very important. Find what activations actually work. That's why you'll find some comedians are very funny um, people like their posts when they put up their skits and stuff. But when they put up some marketing stuff, mm -hmm. the likes go down. Mm -hmm. That's activation design. That, that activation is poorly designed. Yeah. So find a way, and oh, I guess it's free marketing. But someone like Njugush, I love how Njugush, you know, yeah, yeah. he's able to, 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 to find that balance between um, the content that he's putting out and the marketing. So he's actually an influencer who is marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that balance is really a tricky part to, to sort of... And that's the reality. There's no kind of cookie cutter um, form for a social media influencer. There's different kinds. Um, and, and Chiki, we were discussing this earlier, there's the fast moving products and then there's mm. long term mm. purchases and kind mm. of making that distinction before you get onto that journey of influencing. Mm. I mean, just to go back to what you said before, there's nothing like the job of an influencer. That doesn't exist. And I feel like you get into really dangerous ter territory when you start saying, what I want to be when I grow up is an influencer. Yeah. Because now you look at university students, girls are dressing in nothing. Boys are always popping bottles in a club with girls because they know it's going to give them likes. So then for them, the fact that I have likes and followers means automatically I'm influential. That doesn't exist. You have to be in a market. So you have to say, you know, for example, I'm a wellness advisor. So I have influence over that particular market. Please, if you're watching, don't be like, I want to be an influencer when I grow up. There are some people, I have a friend to, uh, called Cachero. He's a cool guy. If he walks into any room, definitely you're going to look at him. So if you see his page, uh, you want to be where he is. So he has a sphere of influence. If he says, I'm going to this club, maybe some people, and he's not an influencer, he's just a guy. Maybe some people want to come. Now just imagine if he worked for a trap house, if he worked for a trap company, now his sphere of influence just grows and grows and grows and grows. Right. So at the point then when you can say he has, he works for a big trap label, he's a, that's when you can start saying now he's an influencer because he knows the market, he knows the people, and if you look at his social media page, he's entertaining and engaging. There's nothing like your job is an influencer. And you know, um, there'll still be that university student sitting in the dorm watching this interview and saying, okay, Chiki, I still want to be a, a social media yeah. influencer, you know, um, which then, Kamarichi, you deal with them. Yeah. Do they make money? They do make money. It is, it's a bankable career at the end of the day. Um, if I can prove, um, you know, and it begins with, like she said, she has a friend who would walk in the, into the room and his presence is felt. Yeah. So, you know, you can, if you convert that into your online presence, and you know, if you couldn't, if you have 500 followers, because we've come to see follower count doesn't really matter. You know, if you have 500 and you can influence 400 out of the 500, makes you an influencer. So you scale that up, and you know, if brands see value in what you have to offer, then they're willing to work with you. You know, uh, you have something you want to push, they have something they want to push, you match their audience, they're willing to work with you, it gives them the awareness right. online. And you know this, uh, if you can give them the brand love, then you've influenced a certain demographic to buy into what this brand wants to sell. And at the end of the day, you're reaching someone and you can convert someone. Uh, let's, let's take, a, you, want, uh, you want to react to that, Chiki, yeah. quickly before we move to it's the... Not, it's not a career. 
it's, it, it might be the case that whilst you're at mm. university, mm. you can influence. If that's not a career. When I was at uni, there were things that I was doing that I was making money. That doesn't mean it's my career. If you look at Shaq the Young, it's a perfect example. Yeah. People get older. Mm. People stop. Ha so th does that mean that whilst you're at university, that's what you could? That's not a career. That means that whilst you're at uni, you can make some money on the side by being cool on campus. Yeah. So how do you convert that into a career? Because mm. that in itself is not a career. So what, you think it's more of like a glorified side hustle? I it think can be something that's substantial. <laughs> if be, you're a cool cat on yeah. campus what, what? and alcohol brands want to jump onto the fact that you're a cool cat on yeah. campus, sure, I mean, there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I think we can get into very dangerous territory when we start talking about that as a career. Because outside of partying then, yeah. what are you talking about? If you're at university and you start on a fitness journey, for example, so what you're interested in is mm. fitness and you mm. influence that kind of sphere right. of young people mm. in fitness, that's different. Your journey is fitness and you're influential under that. But if you're just a cool, hot girl, a cool guy on campus and but alcohol brands want to jump onto your cool factor, cool, by all means, I'm not vilifying right. that. It's just not a career. But I wonder if uh, you, it makes room for brand evolving mm -hmm. uh, okay we can bring up the the whole example of the kardashians mm -hmm. right yeah so they've been accused of coming up because they were just pretty faces and that's about it mm. but they've built huge empires as a result uh, and are you able to kind of use the fluff first mm -hmm. to kind of attract people in, hook them in and then build to something a bit more substantial now that's why we're talking about brand commercialization mm -hmm. okay when you took, when you look at it as this you've built a brand um whether it's the kardashians or you're an artist, that's a brand, okay? So there are various ways of commercializing it, okay? Um, influencing for a, a beer company or whatever, that's one part of it. Ticket sales, that's another element of it. Um, what else could you do? I mean, with the brand commercialization, really, it's your creativity. Mm. It's, 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 it's as creative mm. as you can be. Right. You can even come up with an app that people who've done, um, um, they've come up, instead of just influencing for an existing product, you right. come up with a product and you use your influence to sell the product. So I sort of agree with Chiki and sort of not agree because the idea is it, it is that influence that you have is an asset in your brand. So the question is, how do you do a mix? And that's what you're talking about, a revenue mix. Mm -hmm. So as a brand, if you're creative or if you have a creative team behind you, they're able to sit down and come up with various revenue sources for your brand commercialization. Okay, and that brings us into the territory of, because uh, I see a lot of people criticizing the influencer tag as online prostitutes. I mean, you talked about uh, that mix of brand and products that you'll be doing, and someone is like, well, one day you're pushing one mm. telco, the next day you're mm. pushing this mm. telco. How do I find authenticity in your messaging? You know, and, and, and then, of course, kind of build a stronger band that lasts longer. But in your view, Chiki, what's the downside? No, no, so I, that's my biggest bugbear. And if I, I think what Kenyan corporate tends to do is look at social media and say, oh, this person has loads of brands that they're working with, therefore they must be successful, therefore I should jump on them as well. For me, it should obviously be the opposite. If someone is pushing five brands, how can they also effectively yeah. push your brand? And how do you trust even that kind of process that they're, they're pushing? And it goes back to me that influencing in itself is not a thing. If you are um, an artist, that's a thing. So you are influential as an artist. So you can, like, you get yeah. close to a brand that suits what your thing is. So then you, you, you marry the two together. You can't do that effectively for more than one or two brands. And, and I wonder, I mean, do you want to react to that, Kamarichi? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually still on the point where she said it can't <coughs> really be a career because people have made careers out of this because ideally what at the end of the day what is a career it's what you do to put bread on your table it's what you do to get paid so if um as an influencer you know i've built my influencer through you know partying going to different clubs doing club reviews and club owners are willing to pay me for that mm -hmm. so as people are going to spend their money in a club i'm being paid to make an appearance there i'm being paid to hold a certain bottle because uh, you know, I, I can attest to that. I've worked with brands that I've actually paid uh, certain celebrities to go to a specific club with their brand and, you know, showcase it and build a sort of culture and lifestyle around it. So, you know, if you do that continually, it's what you've been doing for about a year, two years, then it is your career. 
You now, are an influencer name me in two that space. people, mm-hmm. yeah. just two, mm-hmm. who their job is just to market an alcohol. They're not a TV presenter. They're not a radio presenter. They're not like those are their, that they don't mm-hmm. have anything outside mm-hmm. of influencing mm-hmm. the brand. So they organically um, grew from just yeah. social media. There's nothing else attached to their fame or notoriety. Just influencing a brand. This influence, like, like you're saying, they've grown their influence from working with the brand because it doesn't it wouldn't work like that they'd have to sort of build that influence then brands want to work with them no precisely so that's yeah. that's what i'm saying influencing alone mm-hmm. is not a career it's something you partner with something else that you're doing aka you built your influence because you're a television presenter you built your influence because you're a radio presenter mm-hmm. i'm asking for two examples of people that don't have anything outside of yeah. the brand I will give you more than two. Give me. Not right now, because give Pierce, Pierce a visit <laughs> at our office at the discussion. Because no, they, you can't they, say they can't, they can't allow later. me to actually do this live television. Mm-hmm. So visitors at our offices, no, but they should I'll, be well I'll known the enough. Okay. They are well known. Um, <laughs> just to be open about it, you've actually mentioned one, one of them. Mm-hmm. Shaq the Youngin so, is yeah. a radio presenter. Before a radio presenter, what he was he? No, but this is the point that I'm making. Yeah. When you're a cool cat at uni, if you can find something that will supplement your university thing, yeah. sour. The reason why I'm saying it can't be a career, it can just be something you're doing mm-hmm. for a finite period of time, is what happens next. You leave uni. So then what do you then evolve into? Kardashians are another good example. If you their whole life, you have to mm-hmm. evolve into something. If your whole life you're just saying, buy this bag, buy this makeup, buy this alcohol, and, and that's all I'm saying, that's all I'm offering. Can what I, is that? Can I ask this one? Mm-hmm. Is it possible for someone to organically grow from, and, and just like you mentioned, Chiki, it seems even in the Kenyan market, you have to have some larger or foundational thing that launches you into other stuff. So like you're saying, TV, yeah. radio, so that's your foundation. Mm-hmm. And from that, you launch other things. Can someone just out of nowhere just pop up and become an influencer? Is that possible to organically grow on one of the platforms? Um, yes and no. Again, it all depends with the audience which you're targeting. If you're targeting an audience that's maybe younger, 21, mm. below, you can definitely grow it because most of those people are on social media. Mm. And they, th- those people came up sort of in the social media age. So social media is kind of like their KBC, mm. you get, um, mama and baba. But now, the, the kind of, if, if you're targeting a slightly older people, um, I mean, there are, there are 60 year olds who, who have to be forced to even get on WhatsApp, you know, so <laughs> you're not gonna, you're not gonna attract that, that audience if you're not on TV. And here's the other thing, very important um, point is that there is no media which has ever replaced another in the history of media. Mm. There was newspaper, it came, after that there was radio. Radio never replaced newspaper. After that TV came, TV never replaced um, radio and newspaper. After that, the digital space came, and I don't think the digital space will necessarily replace all the others. Mm. And so there's a, and, and, and in your 360 communication, you sort of have to include all three. Mm. So yes, you can grow that organic, right. that organic, but it all depends um, with your audience. So they, they all play a role, and they all will play a role in the future of marketing products. Exactly. There is no, I mean, everybody said, you know, digital is going to throw out say newspaper, I mean, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, If we can go to the last slide really quickly, just as we kind of get your final thoughts uh, from that uh, research, which was looking at the celebrity factor. And they were looking at the average Instagram audience, uh, the last slide. And, And someone made a very interesting kind of observation on Twitter. And they said, there's no more celebrity culture in Kenya, which is a good thing, they put in uh, brackets, except for politicians, which is (laughs) a very bad thing. And you can see there, the average Instagram audience per category, MPs, okay, at 516,000. And then you go down from there, gospel music, comedians, mainstream music, radio, TV. Um, So when we talk about now just generally celebrity, what is that? Is it still a facade, you know, in terms of even social media? Because again, it's a a lot of uh, things we put up to show people, but it's not anything real or authentic. Mm. What do you make of the celebrity culture in Kenya generally? I'll begin with you, Chicken. Um, I think celebrity culture is fine. I think it's important actually, um, because it's important to have kind of like a light relief to your life. You know, you're entitled, especially when it comes to social media, to follow people that entertain you, engage you in the way that you choose to be entertained and or engaged. So I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. However, I do think 
globally, not just in Kenya, there is a move towards authenticity. And I do think uh, people are much more interested. I think Jagush is a great example. We've brought him up already because everything that he talks about feels authentic. And I feel like there is a real kind of movement in that direction and it will just get kind of like bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think I just see celebrity culture going in that direction. But I think it's, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> Kamaruchi, your thoughts and even in terms of the future of social media marketing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like uh, celebrities p play a big role in that. And like she said, you know, people have, you know, you get to choose what kind of content it is you want to put out there. Um, for social media influencers, it's about, you know, they have to stay true to their content and they have to stay very authentic to their audiences because um, the audiences are very smart people at the end of the mm -hmm. day. You know, they know when there's a paid promotion, when, when this lacks of authenticity so they don't resonate with it. And, you know, it's, it's what influencers, I'd say, would owed to their fans and followers and they follow them but the authenticity is the least they could give them okay yeah yeah politicians yes in fact interesting story about congolese music and why music is big in congo mm. mobutu seseseko actually put out a government project where he was funding um he was funding musicians so that influence and the fact that he endorsed it and he made it a big thing Look at even locally, some of our big acts, when, mm. when Saudi Soul um, you know, danced with the president and with Obama, it became yeah. a big thing. When, um, oh, what's she called? Emi Koskei, you know, she, her song came out, uh, it was used during the, was it the inauguration or when we were amalgamating the constitution? I can't remember, a big, mm -hmm. there was a big event, you know. So politics and music, especially in Africa, are, I mean, um, uh, politics is, 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 is always the biggest thing. Right. And even the, uh, for the musicians who attach themselves with politicians end up being mm, big. Mm. So I think it's just the way we are as Africans, I don't know. So, but the future, I think the future of, of um, social media influencing, honestly get, get I, I think the problem I have with influencer marketing, it's like a teenage marriage. Mm. Okay, uh, a brand uh, endorsement generally is, is, is a brand marriage between two, ma two, two, two consenting you know, brands basically. But the problem is uh, two people are coming together who are not self-aware and they don't know what it takes to, for the union to work. So I think what we need are uh, dating agencies such as, <laughs> such as Mawaida. <laughs> you know, to sort what of, an analogy, but yes. yes. We need those dating agencies you know, to sit down and say, you are the influencer. Yeah. This is, these are your branding assets. This, these are your brand values. You are, the, you are the company that's trying to market. These are your objectives, okay? We're trying to achieve a brand objective, brand awareness, or we're trying to achieve product awareness or price positioning or sales, or all three. Then how can we design an activation with the influencer that also builds the brand? Because at the end of the day, you don't want to build the market, the, the client's brand at the, if, at the expense of the influencer's brand. Right. Yeah. Now, for anyone trying to, and I see a question here from uh, Bashi saying, what constitutes an influencer in terms of followers? Because you can have someone mm. with a thousand saying influencer, mm. and someone with a million, of course, saying influencer. Mm. What constitutes an influencer in terms of followership mm. on social media, just practically speaking? Mm. Okay. Now, that depends. For example, if you have 10,000 high school kids following you, mm -hmm. And someone else has 10 CEOs following them. Mm. So when I say, you know, I'm showing up, I'm, I'm selling this product, I will send it to 10,000 um, CEOs. That means those are tenders which are coming in. So you, you're in what I call the B2B influencer space. And this other one is in the B2C influencer space. So the issue is one, the numbers, but also the type, the mm. quality or the type. Let me not say the quality because at the end of the day, all of them are different markets. So one is the numbers, two is the, cl the, the, the market segmentation you're in, three is your ability to influence. Because if you have 10,000 followers, but when you tell them, you know, come to this place, no one shows up, you have numbers, but not, you're not, you're, you're, you don't have, uh, mm. you have fake numbers. And of course, so you know, we have fake numbers. Yes, like people actually the, the buy bots. bots. Yes. People actually buy bots um, from, some very clever people, I don't know whether they're from China or whatever, <laughs> um, but some clever people have come up with a way of actually digitally increasing your fake numbers. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's why you have a million followers, but okay. your engagement, you put up a post and only 10 people like the thing. So no. numbers are not an entirely deciding factor. Mm. No, they're not. I, I would say actually numbers are a really low factor. I think Kenya in terms of marketing is, 
if you look at the way South Africans market, for example, you can find someone with even 1,000 followers getting a really decent uh, endorsement deal because you know that those 1,000 followers have really bought into uh, the brand. Um, I remember doing an activation myself quite recently for um, a finance app. And at the time, it was a few months ago, I think I had maybe 70,000 followers. I was on the lower end of the scale. Everyone else had maybe 300,000, 400,000, 500,000. But to date, the brands have said that it was my influencer that had the most clicks on it because I just made sure the content was very relevant to my audience um, and I kept it really, really kind of specific. I know who follows me, what kind of things that they like to hear. And so I don't think numbers, I actually think numbers is probably the smallest. When you look at all the different factors that influence influencing, yeah, yeah. I think it's probably the smallest because you can have half a million followers of people, if you look at that last chart, that follow you just for entertainment. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You can have a million followers that follow you just because you're hot. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that People are inspired by you, are interested by you, are they might just want to see a hot girl right. every so often. Yeah, on they'll just like it. That's yeah, they'll just yeah. like it, and that's about it. Yeah. yeah, so it's uh, more about the who and how yeah. you tell this story. Yeah, yeah. come yeah. and see, I'll finish with you. Yeah, um, you know, at the end of the day, since we're looking at influencers and the marketing <laughs> bit of it, the marketing comes in when you know brands are involved. So there's campaign performance to be looked at. So, for example, we had Medios just actually today launched a pr uh, program called Promo where we're actually looking at, you know, from influencers to sign up, do their campaign, and then we look at the performance of the campaign at the end. Mm -hmm. So depending on what um, the objectives are from the brand, are we looking for brand love? Are we looking for sales? You know, are we looking for awareness? Are we looking for talkability? You know, all these things come different. So I would pick a certain influencer and, you know, run a campaign with them and see, this one gave me actual sales. This one gave me brand love. This one gave me talkability. Mm. So in different... With different objectives, I can pick different influencers mm -hmm. and you know, match them to that campaign. And, and at the end, we're able to actually just match and know this is a great influencer for this kind of category right. of marketing. And that. So the influence will be determined by you know, how they actually do this thing. So for example, you'd find an entertainment influencer would be good for talkability and reach. Then there would have, you have someone with a thousand followers who can actually get people to download an app or you know, actually walk into a bank and open a certain account with that bank. You know, so there's different categories to all this. All right. Yeah. And that brings this discussion to a close. I know we can be here all night or all week. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about, we talk about social media. <laughs> Boniface, Kamarichi, Chicken, thank you so much thank for you. your time. Thank you. Keep the discussion going online. Are social media influencers really that relevant? Well, I hope this discussion helped open your eyes a bit more on this subject matter.